This cocktail has the most screwed up recipes in all of the cocktails across the world. Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Why am I so dressed up? Yeah, I put a jacket on for you. This is our 50th episode. It's like a landmark episode right here. And the cocktail that we're making tonight is something that I have been so nervous about doing because I wanna do such justice for it. You would think that after 50 episodes of tiki drinks, you'd be like, yeah, I, he already did the Mai Tai. Of course he did the Mai Tai. It's been 50 episodes. No, I haven't done the Mai Tai. And the reason I haven't done the Mai Tai is because because I wanted to have a bunch of cocktail shows under my belt so that this one could be the best one. Because the Mai Tai is so important. Now there's always been some controversy about the Mai Tai. Who invented it, what the ingredients are. I think the way to do this justice is by reviewing Trader Vic's a 1972 bartender's guide and reading it directly from the dude. There has been a lot of conversation over the beginning of the Mai Tai. And I want to get the record straight. I originated the Mai Tai, not me, Trader Vic. Many others have claimed credit. Some claim it was originated in Tahiti because Mai Tai is a Tahitian phrase. All of this aggravates my ulcer completely. In 1944, after success with several exotic rum drinks, I felt a new drink was needed. I thought about all the really successful drinks, martinis, Manhattans, daiquiris, all basically simple drinks. I was at the service bar in my Oakland restaurant. I took down a bottle of 17-year-old rum. It was J. Ray Nephew from Jamaica, surprisingly golden in color, medium bodied, but with rich, pungent flavor, particular to the Jamaican blends. The flavor of this great rum wasn't meant to be overpowered with heavy additions of fruit juices and flavorings. I took a fresh lime, added some orange curacao from Holland, a dash of rock candy syrup, and a dollop of French orgeat for its subtle almond flavor. I added a generous amount of shaved ice and shook it vigorously by hand to produce the marriage I was after. Half the lime shell went into each drink for color, and I stuck in a branch of fresh mint. I gave the first two of them to Ham and Carrie Guild, friends from Tahiti, who were there that night. Carrie took one sip and said, Mai Tai Roea. In Tahitian, this means out of this world, the best. Well, that was that. I named the drink Mai Tai. Trader Vic named the drink Mai Tai. Nobody else. The drink enjoyed great acceptance over the next few years in California and in Seattle when we opened Trader Vic's there in 1948. In 1953, I took the Mai Tai to the Hawaiian Islands when I went down there for the Matson Steamship Lines to formalize drinks for the bars of the Royal Hawaiian, Moana, and Surfrider Hotels. Any old Kamaena can tell you about this drink and of its rapid spread throughout the islands. Now it is estimated they serve several thousand Mai Tais daily in Honolulu alone. And we sell many more than that daily in our 20 Trader Vic's restaurants throughout the world. Anybody who says that I didn't create this drink is a dirty stinker from the man himself, Mr. Trader Vic Bergeron. Now there's a reason why people say that maybe he didn't invent the Mai Tai. And if we go backwards a few years, when he visited the Don the Beachcomber in Hollywood, California, and tried a cocktail called the QB Cooler. Now QB stands for Quiet Bird Man. It's a uh, military Air Force thing. But Vic had this cocktail, loved it, and tried to lock that taste into his mind. He drove like hell back to Oakland and started pouring stuff. People said that he was trying to copy the QB Cooler. Whether that's true or not, the Mai Tai, in the proper formula as it stands, is all Vicks. So this drink originated in Oakland in 1944, and for this cocktail, we will be using limes, orgeat, orange curacao, dark Jamaican rum, Martinique rum, simple syrup, and fresh mint. This is the 50th episode. This is the Mai Tai. Now, if you order a Mai Tai from just about any place that doesn't specialize in tiki drinks or craft cocktails, you're probably gonna end up getting pineapple juice, orange juice, grenadine, Bacardi, Myers rum, uh, a host of all kinds of things. That's kind of what the tiki community has always referred to as the Marriott Mai Tai. And it's basically, it's like, it's like tiki. Some people say tiki is whatever you want it to be. It's not. There are defined rules about it. Some people say that a Mai Tai is whatever you want it to be. It's just some fruit juices and rum. 
It's not. It was a recipe from 1944. And if you want to research it further, look at the Smuggler's Cove book, because Martin Kate, who used to work for Trader Vic, does such a great job of talking about. All right, let's jump into the cocktail. We'll start by cutting a lime in half. And I would like to thank Greg from Ballistic Barbecue for sending me this absolutely incredible Shun Japanese super knife. It's a super knife. Unfortunately, we've gotten rid of my, my tiny little ceramic white knife, but my God, is this the sharpest thing in the world? It is. Like that. Now this channel prides itself on doing the cocktails as close to the original versions as possible. And I mean even techniques and everything. Now for this one, Vic says juice of one lime, which we've come to find out means one ounce of lime juice. Now, if you wanna do this totally, totally authentic to 1944, in his Trader Vic's, they use Sunkiss brand juice squeezers. Now they're not like the juice squeezers that you've seen on this show before, they are sideways. So they actually squeeze the lime rather than, than crush it. So I'm gonna juice these by hand because I think that it'll be more true to the original intent, although it is a pain in the ass. Also, you wanna make sure you save at least one of the lime shells. Okay, we're gonna pour that lime juice into a mixing glass. The next ingredient is simple syrup. This is just one part sugar to one part water and we just need a quarter ounce. Okay, and into the mixing glass. Next ingredient is orgeat, also, one quarter ounce. You can already see that the proportions were very delicate. Vic wasn't loading this cocktail down with a, a, a mess of ingredients. Next, orange curacao. Half an ounce of orange curacao. Now to do this cocktail totally perfectly true to 1944, you need 17 year old J. Ray and nephew Jamaican rum. The Mai Tai became so popular that Victor and all of his clients and everything drank J. Ray and nephew right out of the 17 year old rum. So then he went down to 15 year old rum and it didn't pack the same punch. So he started creating a blend of rums. He thought that a Jamaican mixed with a Martinique rum gets you closer to that 17 year old J. Ray and nephew. We will be using Clement from Martinique and Appleton Estate 12 year from Jamaica. But if you want a shortcut and you only want to buy one bottle, Martin Kate of Smuggler's Cove fame and rum genius fame helped develop Merchant's Reserve by Denizen. Now this was supposed to emulate that blend of rums. This is what they use at Smuggler's Cove. So you can do two ounces of Denizen or we can do a blend of rums. For the show, we're gonna do a blend of rums. When I'm making a Mai Tai at home, I use Denizen. I love that so much, it's great. But if we're trying to be true to 1944, well, a little bit after 1944, when they ran out of the 17-year-old J. Ray and nephew, we're gonna be doing the blend of rums. So it's an ounce each of these rums. And guess what? A cork. And from Martinique. Woo. Oh, that smells good. An ounce of Clement VSOP. Typical of Trader Vic is we are gonna be filling this with ice and then shaking them together. The interesting thing about the Mai Tai is that there are so many variations of Martinique and Jamaican rum and different types of curacao and different types of orgeat. This cocktail, while it will taste similar, can have so many different variations. But I love this version right here. So we are going to put that in the tin, give it a smack. and the tin is frosty. We will be pouring this into a Trader Vic's glass. I think we got a piece of mint in there already. Get out of there. Fill with ice to finish it. Now, if you wanna be taken seriously about your Mai Tai, 
around people who are serious about vintage Trader Vic's Mai Tais, you have to put the spent lime shell in for color as per Trader Vic, but also to emulate an island. And if you've been watching this show for a long time, you know that I think that more mint is the best mint. And of course with the mint, you always want to give it a little bit of a whack to awaken the aroma. And then it sits right behind the island like a little palm tree. And so from 1944, from the Trader Vic's chain in Oakland, California, this is the Mai Tai. Oh, I just got chills. Okay, I'm so excited to try this version of the Mai Tai. God, that's good. It's a complex little treat, man. It's very lime heavy. I can taste the other flavors dancing around in the background. I can taste the difference between the rums. You get like a, you get a very Jamaican flavor from the Appleton. And then that Martinique brings in a bit of a, like a floral kind of taste to it. The sugar's there to cut the tartness, a little bit of almond, a little bit of orange curacao. There is no surprise to me why these things took America by storm. America and Hawaii, and Hawaii wasn't even a state at the time. Now this is a great version, it's really good. Again, if I'm making it for myself at home, out of simplicity and taste, I'm gonna use Denizen. If you wanna save some bucks, because I think each of these bottles are about 40 or $50, it, it can get really expensive really quickly, especially with the orange curacao and it all adds up. Dude, tiki drinks are not cheap. There's nothing cheap about tiki drinks. I have friends that are like, yeah, I have a bottle of Bacardi. Can I, what can I make with that? I go, what are you talking about? I have like 70 bottles of rum, 70 or 80. I, I don't even know anymore, a lot. It's funny when I announced the Mai Tai, when I said, the Mai Tai from Oakland, whatever I said, I swear I got chills. It was like announcing a celebrity. Like, <laughs> like we've met the tap of punch and the Navy Grog and the different daiquiris and all kinds of stuff. But this is the one. This is the cocktail that made Tiki just a gigantic phenomenon. I have friends that often say that they judge a Tiki bar based on two criteria, beyond decor and music and all that. What does their Mai Tai taste like? And what does their zombie taste like? I think that's a pretty good basis. Like the standard of tropical cocktails and then the most exotic, like like the Martin Denny exotica drink of drinks, the zombie. It's pretty cool. Do you guys have your favorite Mai Tai places? What are your favorite Mai Tai places? Mention it in the comments below. Now, if you're new to the channel, I should probably explain that uh, the reason for this channel is that I played uh, played guitar and sang in a band called the Hula Girls for about 12 years. And it was a mix of like rockabilly and surf, but the rockabilly side was themed in Hapahali, which means English lyrics to Hawaiian music, but with like a rockabilly slant to it. When I first learned the recipe for the Mai Tai, like 20 some years ago, I could never remember what the proportions were. And I was like, I should write a song. I should write a song about the proportions so that I'll never forget it. The song is on our first record. It's called Suck Em Up. And I'll just play you the chorus, all right? So it goes, Well, a quarter ounce of this and a quarter ounce of that. Two pot rum, gonna blow off my hat. Half an ounce more, bound to knock me on the floor. Crack the ice, squeeze the lime, and hey, 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 suck em up. Baby, 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 suck em up. Like a monkey in the trees, don't say please suck him up, suck him up. Woo! So there you go. Quarter ounce of this, quarter ounce of that, two parts rum, gonna blow off my hat. Half an ounce more, bound to knock me on the floor, crack the ice, squeeze the lime. Hey, 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 suck him up. And suck him up came from that glass that if you've seen the vintage glasses from uh, Don Ho's show, it says suck him up on one side and the other side has a, basically a recipe for like a Marriott Mai Tai. But that's the reason I wrote that song. You can find it on Spotify. Oh man, yeah, that was the reason why I wrote that song. We played that over and over and over again. And also, if you get if you get confused about which one is the half ounce um, and which one is the quarter ounce between the orange curacao and the orgeat, because they kind of sound the same, orange curacao is a longer word. 
So it gets the half ounce as opposed to the quarter ounce. I hope that helps. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us once again on Spice Breezeway Cocktail Hour for this 50th episode. If you are new to the channel and you haven't seen, I don't know, the other 49 episodes, go backwards. There's all kinds of incredible stuff with contortionists, pinup models, surfboard shapers, punk rock legends, all kinds of people. I'd like to say that we had a lot of fun for the last year. So thank you so much, everybody who has been loyal to the show and really, um, I really do appreciate it. So on the way out, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Seriously, hitting that like button makes a big difference. And leaving a comment, just saying, hey dude, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out on Friday night. And I'll be like, yeah, thank you. Thank you for hanging out on Friday night. Thank both of us. I'm glad you enjoyed it and I'm glad uh, I enjoyed it. What's this? This honking's ruining my show. All right. Aloha. Ah oh, man. We'll start by cutting a, a we'll start by cutting a <laughs> This is the cocktail that made Tiki just a gigantic phenomenon. 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 I added a generous amount of shade. I when he visited, when he visited the bear, there was even a scene in Blue Hawaii with Elvis where there's a lady in the scene and, and she goes, what do you call these, what'd she say? What do you call these delicious little tummy warmers? And the guy, the guy's like, Mildred or whatever, that's, that's a Mai Tai. I gotta rewatch that. I probably butchered that scene. If you know, if you know how that scene goes, mention it in the comments below. Now don't get me wrong. I am uh, I'm very snobby about the 1944 Trader Vic's Mai Tai. This is the Mai Tai. This is the recipe. This is the one. If other bars and restaurants want to do the Marriott Mai Tai, um, I don't begrudge them. <laughs> Inside of Billy's at the Beach is incredible. Like a lot of decor from Oceanic Arts, a lot of carvings by Buzzy. The interior was all done in bamboo and matting by Bamboo Ben. And uh, their Mai Tai is very much a Marriott Mai Tai, and, but people love them. Uh, they will get you trashed very quickly. Be careful. I just wish they would name it something else because, but in Newport Beach, my, you know, I, God, I don't know. You start getting into the nuance of this stuff and you just go like, are you gonna re-educate the world that, that a Mai Tai only has lime juice plus some mixers in it? Like, it is what it is. Now QB stands for quiet bro, uh, now he drove, I don't know, Mai Tai Roea. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but out of this world, the best in Tahitian. Isn't that rad? Super rad. Anybody who says that I didn't invent this is a dirty stinker. <laughs> Trader Vic. You love calling people dirty stinkers. Maybe we'll bring that back. It should be a thing that people say all the time. You dirty stinker. Maybe the world would be in a better place if we all use dirty stinker. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode with Alan Smart at his incredible home tiki bar in Echo Park. Uh, the Halakahiki. Mai Tai Roea, out of this world. <laughs> Since that episode, we have been invited to all kinds of home tiki bars, and I'm gonna try to get to as many as I can. I have some friends, a long time friends in the tiki scene who have absolutely incredible tiki bars, so uh, we'll probably go to those first. Anybody, anybody have a guitar pick? Hmm. Oh, got one. If you want to be taken seriously for your Mai Tais from people who... Now, if you want to take me... Now, if you want to be taking... There was even a scene in Blue Hawaii 
There was even a, I'm starting to slur. I already had a, a Mai Tai with Denizen and like a glass of Dr. Bird rum. I don't know why, it's Sunday. Like what, what are you, what are you doing? I don't know.